question. You got a question? Yeah. We out here teaching, man. Yeah, yeah, okay. Is it in the spirit of this? Um, is uh, it for the edification? Yeah, I got, I got a question. So, is it for the edification? So, so uh, y'all believe, so y'all believe that no one can be saved except for black people. You know what I'm saying? When Jesus come back and set the world straight, that no white people can be saved, no other race. That Acts chapter five, verse thirty-one. We're gonna ask you a question. All right, hold because on. It's, it's eight, hold on. Eight, gonna, wait, wait, I'm I need one question at a time. Okay, ask your no, question. It's the same question. I'm just gonna keep you on the context because it's like more than eight scriptures in the Bible that's directly against what you're saying. Because I'm like, when y'all, I see some stuff y'all say, it's on point. Hold some on. Wait, hold on. Some What's your question? Some of y'all, listen. Let, let, All right, let go ahead. Know. Some of the stuff y'all say be on point and it be in align with the Bible, but a lot of y'all doctrine so, be so twisted be, and it be like confusing and it doesn't make sense. When y'all try to go to something, y'all jump around. Y'all don't stay in the context of what's happening. Nah, so to, uh, so uh, my question one. is, who can be saved? Who can be saved? Good question. All right. Very, very, very good question. All right. So your question is, ask it again so it's clear. Who can be saved? Who can be saved, all right? The first thing you have to learn is how to read the Bible. Because some of the things that you said were true. And now I have to prove it to you, all right? Where you at? All right, read that, please. Come on. Psalm chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So the Bible says the fear of the Lord. You first have to have a fear for God. Right? A fear for God for a woman would be a woman. If this woman has fear, right? I'm going to show you. We just read scriptures about the cross and the uh, charm that she has on being a teacher of what? Of lies. Of lies, right. Mm -hmm. So if a woman has a fear of God, right? What is a woman going to do? Is she going to keep that on or is she going to take it off? Take it off. Are you going to take it off or are you going to keep it on? Take it off. All right. She's going to take it off. I'm going to change my charm. That's, a, that's, a, that's the woman that has a fear of God. She's going to change her ways. Repent from doing something that's evil and do something that's right. First, you have to have that before you're going to get an understanding of the Bible. If you don't have that off jump, you're not going to get an understanding of the Bible. Read on. Mm, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come on. A good understanding have all they that do. That do what? That do. That do what? That do his command. How do you get a good understanding of the Bible, brother? That's my question for you. You see what I mean? Yes. How do you get a good understanding of the Bible? I read it. I pray and I ask God to show me. Give me through His Holy Spirit to show me what the Bible is saying. Because it's going to teach me. I can't interpret it from my own mind. All right. The Spirit has to interpret you, it too. You weren't paying attention. So I want you to pay attention this time. I'm going to read the scripture no, again. Listen. I just, know what the scripture just, says. Just humble down, I brother. Oh, I asked you, you a I'm question. Gonna, right. You gave me an answer. You Your answer did not that. match the Bible. Right. You understand? No, my answer don't match your answer. Your answer, answer matched the Bible. Your, we just read the I, I, Bible. I have a fear of the Lord. We trust, just know trust, that. Trust me. You me, missed me, the point. Me and God read it again. He, he's not listening. Read it again. Trust me. Verse 10. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come on. A good understanding. A what? A good understanding. A what? A good understanding. My question is, how do you get a good Understanding. That's my question. You fear God. Wrong. Read on. Have all they? You get a good understanding by this. Come on. That do. By what? That do. That do what? That do his commandments. You get a good understanding by doing the commandments, brother. We just read it's A, B, C, D. It's easy. So, so we just read it. If you fear God, you keep his commandments. That's what the Bible says. You should. No, you should. You will. Well, do you fear God? Yes, I do. All right, Numbers chapter 15. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to show you, I'm going I'm to say whether or not you fear God. All right? Okay, okay, but you say, you listen. You can't tell me. You All right. All right, this is a commandment. A lot of things you want to done before. All right. Watch this, watch this. Watch this. Read what you got. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Come on. Speak unto the children of Israel. Come on. So and this this message right here, this whole Bible is for who? The nation of Israel. That's what you see right here. 12 tribes of Israel. Right? This was a commandment given to the 12 tribes of Israel. So if we are keeping God's commandments, then we should know because we'll be doing this right here. Come on. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them. And do what? And bid them. Bid means to command. So speak to the children of Israel and command them, command them to do what? Come on. That they make them fringes. That they make what? That they make them fringes. These are fringes right here. You see that? That's called a fringe, sister. You see what all these brothers got on? These are fringes, right? I want you to pay close attention to the fringe. Come on. And the borders of their garments throughout their generation. For how long? Throughout their generation. Let me ask you this. Are the children of Israel still generating? 
Yes, no question. So we need to do this for how long? Come on. Throughout their generation. We need to do this throughout all of our generations, right? right? All of our generations, right? That's us today. 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 Come on. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. A what? And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. That you put upon the fringe. You see what we got on? What color is this ribbon? The ribbon. Ribbon going around. What color is that? It's what color? Blue. What color it says? What color it says? What color it says? What color it says? It's all blue. Why? Read. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it. No, I want the, and put upon his fringe the what? <clears throat> and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. The Bible says put a ribbon of blue on top of your fringe. What are we reading? A commandment that God gave his people to do for how long? Throughout all of their generations. Are we still generating? Yes, we're still generating today. Should we still have fringes on our clothes as a commandment? Yes, we should still have fringes on our clothes. Keep reading. Keep reading. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So why should I have this on my clothes? So that Mm. That you may look upon it and remember. And do what? And remember. So this should remind me to do what? And remember all the commandments of the Lord. This should remind me to do all of God's commandments. Wow. So God gave me a commandment to put fringes and a border of blue on all my clothes to remind me about the rest of all his commandments. See, today we don't have this on our clothes. So today you don't have brothers out here reminding you that you shouldn't be dressed like a man. You understand? That's how easy it is. Because earlier we read a law that said a woman should dress like what? A woman, right? So this fringe, should, you should look at it, and it should remind you to what? There you go. Is that common? That's easy, right? Thank you. Listen, close your mouth. Listen, we're reading the Bible. I'm going to come back to you. Uh, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to come back to you. Psalms chapter 111, verse 10. Close your mouth. Just listen, brother. Hold on. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Because he's not listening. He asked a question, and I'm still answering it. You asked a question, and I'm still answering it. Read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1. Keep thy foot. That means close your mouth. Come on. When thou goest to the house of God. This is the house of God, is it not? We came out here to do what? To teach the Bible. Sister, you learn anything today that I taught? Have you learned anything that I taught today? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What about how women should dress so on and so forth, right? So we came out here to teach God's word. You came out here to teach God's words, right? This is the house of God, right? This is the house of God, right? Read it again. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. And be more ready to hear. Be more ready to what? Be more ready to hear. Be here to listen, right? Come on. Then to give the sacrifice of. Then to give the sacrifice of fools. All right? Now give me Acts chapter 5, verse 31. We're going to answer this question. Right. Right. But they don't believe. Right. No, no, no. We're going to read the Bible. We're going to read the Bible. Read what you got. I know that. Come on. Acts chapter 5, verse 31. Him have God. Listen, listen, sister. He's a, he, he's a deceiver. You was learning fine before he came. No, I'm learning, and now he's disrupting you. Read what you got. Acts chapter 5 verse 31. Him have God exalted. Who are we talking about? Jesus Christ. Pay attention, right? Him have God exalted, right? Come on. With his right hand. With what hand? With his right hand. To do what? To be a prince. To do what? To be a prince. And what else? And a savior. A what? And a savior. A what? And a savior. What was his question? Who, who was salvation saved? for, right? Be to be what? And a savior. To who? For to give repentance. To give repentance to who? To Israel. To who? To Israel. To who? To Israel. To the nation of Israel. This is the nation of Israel. All right? This is the nation of Israel, right? Now give me uh, Romans chapter 9, verse 13. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. All right? We're going to give you what you want. Come on. He's a distraction. This is the devil right here. He's not keeping any commandments. Did you listen to a brother that don't got fringes on coming to you trying to teach you about the Bible? He ain't keeping no commandments. Come on. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. Bring it out. As it is written. As it is written. Come on. Jacob, have I loved? The Bible says Jacob is loved by God. Jacob is Israel, right? right. He knows that. Jacob is Israel. But li listen to what else God says. Come on. 
But Esau. Wait, who? But Esau. Who is Esau today? Since you know so much. Hold on. Since you know so much. Who is, Who is Esau today? Who is Esau? He can't answer the question. All right? So I'm going to teach you, sister. Esau is the so-called white man. Esau is the so-called white man. Esau is the so-called white man. Esau is the teacher of lies. Esau is who taught him everything he knows about the Bible. Esau taught him that. Esau is your, the devil, your oppressor. Esau taught you that what you got on your neck, right? Thank you. You with me, sister? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Read you back. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved. So God said he loved Jacob. Jacob is the nation of Israel. You try now, to live what are we reading? What? what chapter of like the book Moses is this? Said, what chapter is it? This is Romans, right? Is Romans in the New Testament or the Old Testament? The blood of Jesus Christ. Romans is in the New Testament, right? Read on. As it is written, Jacob have I loved. Jacob have God loved. Come on. But Esau. But who? Esau is the so-called white man, right? We're reading the New Testament, right? The book of Romans, right? What does God say about Esau? Read. But Esau, have I hated? Have I what? 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 Have I hated? So who does God hate? Who does God hate? Esau. We just read it. How does God love everybody when we just read in his book that he hates Esau? You're a liar. You're a liar. Come on. Go ahead. Bring that. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 17. Verse 16. Excuse me. You, you, you came here to, to disrupt. We came here to teach the people. He came here to be a distraction to the people who came up to listen, to learn. You understand? He is the devil. I'm going to show it to you. Mark chapter 4. Watch this. Mark chapter 4. Watch this. Now you know what the devil is, right? All right. I'm going to show you something. Mark chapter 4, verse 16. Read what you got. Come on. Mark chapter 4, verse 15. Your, your distraction. Read. And these are they by the wayside. So there's four types of Israelites on this earth. Four types of people in the nation Israel. You fall into one of these categories. We all do. I'm going to show you who he is. Right? I'm going to show you who he is and who I hope you're not. Right? Come on. Where the word is sown. We, have we been sowing the word out here? Yes or no? We have been sowing the word. And we've been sowing the word by doing what? By teaching the Bible. Right? Precept upon precept, line upon line. Everything we've you're said, we've gone into the, the, the Bible Testament, to show you, right? You're only showing the right? Old Testament and you're disregarding right. the New Correct. But we I just read Romans I chapter 9, verse 13, right? Testament right. So, system, my point, just, just try to tune them out. Saved. You understand? Focus right now. Okay. So, if we have been out here sowing the word to you and to a lot of other people out here. Right or wrong? Yes or no? Yes, right? Read that again. And these are they by the wayside. So, this is these are this type of Israelite that's by the wayside. Come on. Where the word is sown. Where the word is sown. We just sold the word, right? Come on. But when they have heard, you've heard the word. We've taught you, we've taught you things that were right. We've taught you things on how to better your community, how to teach your, your daughters, how to teach your sons, how to get a better husband. You understand? How to do these things because you have been lied to your whole life and by the white is, man, right? We we sold that question. into you, right? Come on. Satan. Who? Satan. That's Satan. You still that's Satan. I'm gonna I'm prove to you that that's Satan. All right. I'm gonna prove it to you, right? Then Satan. Where does he come when we're sowing the word? What happens? Come on. Satan cometh immediately. He comes immediately to do what? Come on. And take it away the word that was sown. What was he just trying to do to you? Was he trying to take away? That, was he trying to do that to you just now? So who is that? The Bible says. That's who? In the last I can't hear you, sister. That's who? That's who? Tell him the microphone. Tell him the microphone. Who is that? Who is that? That's Satan. That's, that's right. Satan right there. Everybody here knows you the devil, brother. That's you a right. deceiver. You a deceiver. You ain't changing no minds over here because we teaching out the Bible, bro. We teaching you prove what you say out the Bible. All right? From there, it's 12 gates. Uh, Revelation chapter uh, 20, 21. That's Let's get it. We're going to show you so precept upon out. precept, line upon line. All right? We can show. We spiritual men out here. We can see the devil. We can see the Can Christ see the devil? He told the devil, hold that. Get Mark chapter 8, verse 33. All right? Mark chapter 8, verse 33. We teach it, you, sister. This is a distraction. But you good. Now you know he the devil. You know what I'm saying? Read what you got. Mark chapter 8, verse 33. But when he had turned about. This was Christ. Christ turned to his own brother. Sometimes we get the devil.
devil on us and we become little deceivers, right? That's what he is right now. He a deceiver. I had to deceive the people. Come on. But I got mm. scripture to back and up look up he on his disciples. You he rebuked he Peter. Him. Say he rebuked the he rebuked Peter, his disciple. What did he say to Peter? Come on. Get thee behind me, Satan. What did he call him? Get thee behind me, Satan. You see that? So we got love for the brother. We hope he repent. But right now, who is he to you? To Satan. To you. That's you right. see that? That's who he is. Revelation chapter twenty-two. Right. Let's get it. Revelation chapter twenty. We're gonna show you who the kingdom of God is for. All right, precept upon precept, line upon line. We do this. We ain't know I woke up today and I was on my way to the store to break God's Sabbath and I see the prophets out, so I'm going to come disrupt them. That's who you are today. Come on. Revelation chapter 21, verse 12. They had a wall great and high. So when you get to the kingdom, Lord's will, you make it, right? It's going to be 12 gates. You were taught by the teacher of law how many gates it was going to be. You were taught it was going to be 12 gates? Who knows 12 gates for? All right, we're going to teach. You, you say everybody, right? But let's see what the Bible says, right? Okay. Come on. And had 12 gates. How many gates? And had 12 gates. So it's 12 gates to the kingdom. We're reading in the book of Revelations. That's the last book of the Bible, is it not? Come on. And at the gates, 12 angels. 12 angels, right? Come on. And names written thereon. So it was even names on the gates. Names on the gates for the kingdom of God. For who? Come on. Which are the names? The names of who? Come on. Of the 12 tribes. Of who? Israel. Of the children of Israel. So who is the kingdom of God for? The nation of Israel. That's what gate you gonna go in if you ain't got no gate, brother? Ain't no, ain't, it ain't no, no kingdom, no rulership for the, for the, for the, for the, the nations that then put your people in slavery. Right. You wanna be equal to the people you, that put you that. into slavery? You know you're not Get out that, of here, you know bro. You're not saying Get that. out of here, bro. It's you're 12 gates you're according to that. the 12 you tribes of Israel. What gate point. is everybody else gonna go in if they ain't got a gate? It's a gate for Judah. It's a gate for Benjamin. Revelation chapter seven, I believe. All right, but there's a gate for each nation of Israel. Not, not one gate with many people like you've been taught. And the churches that teach lies. All right. The church don't even now, teach that. Now there's there's uh get Romans chapter nine. Watch this, verse four. We're gonna show you who salvation is for, who the promises is for, who the covenants is for. Right. Read what you got. Romans chapter nine, Sorry, verse four. Who are here. Israelites? So who are we talking about? The Israelites. Are we reading in the New Testament or the Old Testament? Read Romans chapter ten. Yeah. Verse 13, read it again. But you won't read. Who are Israelites. So we're reading about the Israelites in Romans chapter 9, right? Read Romans right? chapter Come on. 5, verse 18. So who partake of the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God? Who do all these things pertain to? Read the whole Bible. Read it again. Watch it. Who are Israelites? So we're talking about the Israelites. All of these things he's getting ready to read, to read pertain to the whole world or do they pertain to the Israelites? The Israelites. What, what things pertain to the Israelites? Come on. Read the whole Who are Israelites? To who pertain of the adopts? Pertains what? Who pertain of the adopts? So the adoption is for who? Right. What else is for the Israelites? Come on. And the glory. Who is the glory for? Who, come on. And the covenant. Who is the covenant for? The old and the new. Who's that for? Right. Come on. And the giving of the law. The giving of the law. Who is the law given to? Was the law ever given to the other nations? No. Right? Come on. The At the service of God. Hold on. Who are the, hey, who are the servants of hey, God? Hey, who, right. are the servants of God? Right. who are the servants of God? <laughs> the Israelites hey. are the servants of God, right? Really? So there was there ever a time right. the law, where the, the Levites law, the were ever was, any other people was. but the Israelites? The, law the servants of God? Nations. Were the servants but of God ever right. any other we people besides the Israelites? The no, anymore. they we weren't. All these things always pertain to the Israelites. Come on. The law and the promises. We don't live the promises. Under the law. Who do they pertain we live to? Under the, blood the Israelites. The blood. Come on. We live under Whose the blood are the fathers? Whose are who? Whose are the fathers? So all these things belong to the Most High God, right? Come on. And of whom as concerning the flesh. So concerning us today in the flesh, right? 
not concerning the Chinese, not concerning the Egyptian, not concerning the real Africans. I'm talking about the so-called Negro, so the black, Hispanic, Native Americans. I'm reading the Bible, am I not? All those things we just read I'll pertain read to who? Too. The Israelites, so right? So now we're about to read who read the, Christ read came for, Bible. right? Come on. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the Listen, listen. All those things, the glory, the covenants, the promises, the services, all these things, right? belong to the Israelites of and, and these things right come on who as concerning the flesh concerning us today in the are we still in the flesh okay. right come on Christ came who did Christ come for whose are the fathers and of who concerning the flesh Christ came Christ came for the Israelites That's and all right. these other things that pertain to the Israelites right. how, how difficult is that to understand we're reading the Bible Precept upon precept upon line upon line. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 8. Let's get the new covenant. Who's the new covenant for? The Israelites. Because it's a new covenant with the same people who was given to in the Old Testament. The Israelites. Everything has always been for the Israelites. The whole Bible. The whole Bible. He mad over there. He mad. He mad. Come on. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 8. Bring it out. For finding fault with them. Hold on, he needs you to know what time it is. Almost two o'clock. Almost two o'clock, alright. Read that. Hold on, sister. We're gonna show you something real quick. Come on. For finding fault with them. Come on. He said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. So this new covenant is for who? Come on. With the house of Israel. With who? With the house of Israel. The new covenant is for the house of Israel. Say the same thing over and over and over and over again in the Bible. Whether you read it in the Old Testament or whether you read it in the New Testament. It says the same thing. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 17. This is the context of the world. Everybody want to come say, oh God so loved the whole world. The whole world. God loves everybody because he said he loved the whole world. Well, first you got to find out who the world is right. using the Bible. Based off of what you found out today, who do you think the world is, sister? Those that are right and those who, who have feelings. Who is the world? No, based off of all the scriptures we brought out today about the Israelites, who do you think that world is that God loves so much? Who do you think? Thank you. Read it in the Bible. Come on. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 17. Read. But Israel, but who? But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. So who is salvation for? The Israelites. We just read it. That's Come right. on, read it again. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. So Israel is going to receive the salvation. Come on. With an everlasting salvation. What type of salvation is Israel going to receive? With an everlasting salvation. So who is the everlasting salvation for? The Israelites. Come on. Ye shall not be ashamed. Ye shall not be ashamed. Come on. Nor confound He can't confound us because we're keeping God's laws. It's not equal battle. We're spiritual men. He out here not keeping the commandments. He think he's going to disrupt the word of God? Right. Come on. He can't box. Right. His arms ain't long enough. Right. He ain't got enough ammo. We do this every day because we believe this. That's for real. Right. For real. We done made real sacrifices for this. That's for real. We ain't just wake up and just stumble across this today. You ain't gonna confound us out here. Right. It's not gonna happen. We do this. That's right. We right. shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. World without. Who's the world without end? The Israelites. So when God said he loved the whole world, who is he talking about? The Israelites. Right. Thus saith the Lord, precept upon precept. Why is it that we know this, sister? Because we're keeping the commandments. We're repenting daily. We're getting ourselves right. We're walking according to the Bible, and we're teaching others to do the same thing. That's right. It ain't nothing that we, we can't just do this because we want to. God has to pour his spirit out on each one of us to be able to teach somebody else the understanding, the truth of the Bible. That's it's the right. same Bible that's been on your table for hundreds of years. Bring it up. Your grandmama, their grandmama, their grandma. But ain't nobody ever teach you that. Why? Why? Because they God didn't provide the understanding to those people at that time. That's but right. God is pouring the spirit out now for you to repent. For everybody out here to repent. Right. God is doing that now. So you can't just walk up here and then you go confound the prophets. It's not gonna happen like that. That's you're right. gonna get embarrassed. Right. We're gonna show you that you the devil the Bible speaks of. That's right. And then you're gonna leave shamefully. That's right. 
You gonna go run to a woman. Go talk to the woman. Go pray on a woman. You weak. It's men right here. You gonna talk to some women. Come on, man. That's our men today. That's our men today. That's why we ain't got no leaders and your community look exactly how it look right now. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.